If I tell you the symbols that are used to create a number, can you tell me what the number is? Well, that depends on what number system we're using. If we're using the standard number system that we all know, then I could give you the digits 1 and 2, and you would not know if I was creating the number 12 or 21 with those two digits. We're going to start by looking at the ancient Egyptian number system using hieroglyphs. If you recorded numbers in ancient Egypt, you would be familiar with a set of symbols. This number is 1,333,335. Here it is engraved. This means one, the lotus means 1,000, the god with raised hands means 1 million. We use the symbols 1 to describe 1, 1,000, and 1 million. And I'm sure if there was an ancient Egyptian in the crowd, they would be going, why on earth would you use the same number, 1, to describe having 1 million of something, which sounds great, and having just 1 of something, which sounds pretty meager? If an ancient Egyptian student made an error by forgetting the order of tadpoles and bent fingers, no problem. It could be corrected because the order of symbols does not change their value. They are commutative. In fact, ancient Egyptians sometimes just squeeze their numbers into boxes. This is a box from the Temple of Karnak. So here we have 4,620 Two, when Al-Khwarizmi adopted what became known as our Arabic number system, he assigned place values. To know a number, it was no longer sufficient just to know the symbols. You also had to know where the symbols were. So this 2 means 20, but this same symbol means 2,000. Order also matters in the Chinese abacus. So here's 2,301 which is different from 2,310. The upper beads are worth 5 and the lower beads are worth 1. You can count all of the beads touching the central bar. This is roughly the population of Shanghai. 23,019,143. Notice that the same 3 pattern means 3 or 3 million, depending on where it is. Notice the zero. Number systems which rely on place value really need this zero. And this abacus system has a pattern of beads which means zero, namely that the central bar doesn't have any beads touching it. Maria Montessori used manipulatives to teach mathematics to children. Does her number system use place value like a Chinese abacus? Or in this respect, is it more similar to the ancient Egyptian number system? The first clue is that, like the ancient Egyptian number system, it lacks a symbol for zero. The second clue is that, like the ancient Egyptian number system, you could drop all the blocks and someone could still figure out what number you had built. So here I've scrambled them all. Can you figure out what number I had built? Of course you can. The number is 2,397. Try doing that for a scrambled number in the Arabic number system, and you can just see how important place value is. Go ahead, figure out what number I've scrambled here. You can't. There's many possibilities. Roman numerals, like the number on this entrance gate to the Colosseum, lack a zero. And they could usually be picked up and reassembled if they got scrambled, but not always. I'll leave that for you to ponder. Whether you use a number system with place value or one where symbols are sufficient, you might find it awkward to deal with extremely large or small numbers. This is the mass of the sun in kilograms. Is this symbol important here? No, of course it's not. This is like throwing a chicken at the sun. You can increase that to a Three, it's not going to affect the mass of the sun. 
what about this number? Well, if we increase that, that's like changing the mass of the sun by throwing in a dozen Earths. So still not that significant. So what we really want is something that allows us to capture the important information here and do so efficiently. That's the important information and let's count how many steps we have to take. That looks like 30 um, steps. And the mass of the Sun is 1.98855 times 10 to the 30th kilograms. That's a nice compact way to describe the number. The Babylonian number system is the last that we're going to look at. We're going to look at a single number here. It might look like three different numbers, but it's actually a single number. Those are three symbols. The symbol for 20, the symbol for 38, and the symbol for 21. The 20 is in the what we would think of as the hundreds position. Um, the 38 is in the tens position, and the 21 is in the ones position. But the Babylonians did not use base 10. Instead, they used base 60. So that 38 is not in the tens position, it's in the 60s position. And the 20 is not in the 10 times 10 position, it's in the 60 times 60 position. Ouch! So that's 2,280, and this is 20 times 60 times 60, that's 72,000. So this number is 74,301. I'll leave you to Google uh, the Babylonian number system to find out their major shortcoming and the problems that it caused. They forgot to invent zero. Now that we've seen examples of those number systems where symbol is sufficient, and those number systems where you also need to know the place value, like those on the right, let's just have a fun time and play with our own number system, which is a place value number system. Let's play a little game that uses place value. I've just entered level one of the robot. Here, I have to place the number four into one of these three pipes. I can't make the pipe negative. Um, and anytime I place a ball bearing into one of these pipes, it subtracts that number. Here, I'm going to place a 60 here because I see a four coming up. 70, I can't use, so I have to eject it. Four, I'm going to put the four there. I've got rid of one of my three pipes. I win the game whenever I get three of these pipes um, filled with ball bearings. 50, I'm going to put over there. 70, I have to eject. Number 10, I can put in there. Three, and two gets rid of that pipe. So I only have um, one more pipe to get rid of, and I win. Let's see, how am I going to do this? Okay, 50. I have to eject the 50. There's no penalty for ejecting, so you can keep on going. Uh, you can eject as often as you like. Oh! I didn't see that I could have used that. Um, 30, I'm going to put that there. And I have to eject the 80. And the 30, I can go here. 6 goes to 2, 7. 60. No, I can't use the 60. Can't use the 30. Can't use the 20. Well, I could use the 20 over here. 7. Um, okay, and 1 and 2. And I've been successful. Yes. Now, I'm at level 2. That means that numbers are going to get a bit nastier. So here, 30. I can go over here. Go 50, go 5, and 500. Now let's say that I make a mistake. Here's a typical mistake. I decide that I can put a ball bearing labeled 500 into the 15. Let's see what happens. It turns to negative, and I can never put another ball bearing into that, and I can never get this to zero. So that is stuck, and uh, I still need to fill three of these other ones. So 
Um, I'm really up against it now. Enjoy. <laughs>